is a really good matchup against Slark, as long as the Slark doesn't take over the mid game too much. And if they able to create space for him, which kind of hard to know with the Ember Spirit versus the Slark mid. I, I believe in the EG draft though. I like it more so than the secret draft. It's surprising considering you are the uh, Slark aficionado, but we do have Casey who now has interview with Sunbi. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Thank you so much, Casey. Yes, we have run the gamut with this series. It has all happened. Craziness, historical moments, and now a game number three. Trent, it, it had to end this way. It had to. It had to. It had to, of course. Uh, you don't want it any other way. We came up here hoping for a game three. Does that make us biased? I think so. <laughs> I mean, finally, we're hoping for something when we're casting. We're allowed to go after one thing, and that's always going to be the game three. We want more opportunities for these players to shine. We want more of those beautiful moments that you get. That's what TI is all about. Absolutely. And as we hop into this game number three, it can't help but feel like it might end up running into the same type of issues that we've seen previously, where you, you sit around for a while, you get your farm going, but yeah. ag PA, that, that to me, it's still, it's a backbreaker from time to time if you can hit those big RP and make the combos happen. Yeah, it always feels good when you, you kind of seem to be the alpha carry in a game when you're PA, you know? Like, eventually, I got this. Now, I don't know if he's going to get a rapier like some of these other wild carries out there like Ami, but I, I'm hoping so. Oh, absolutely. That is uh, sort of the be-all, end-all. We saw it with the Aghanim Scepter, kind of a unique build uh, for anybody that missed those games earlier. Uh, the Aghanim Scepter PA into Rapier, one of the craziest builds ever. He got it it's, even when they were ahead. It's become very common, though. I mean, I keep seeing his Aghanims on the PA games. I think it's become a staple of the build that uh, the effect on the blur is just crazy. She's already so annoying to play against, but having that instant cast time as well as the Dispel, can't forget about that, is very handy. And see already kind of an interesting ward place down for EG, wanting to scout the rotations oh. from Secret. I like some mail there. I can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be as elusive as possible on the Ember and fly uh, ever so excited to play some more shouting. It looks like a face Rich would make if they asked for a photo. True enough. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I feel like we need to take a little bit of a breath and reset after that last game. The panel was able to talk for a while about it, um, but it did kind of just feel like one of those games that, how, how do you recover for that as EG afterwards? Um, it, it's going to need to just come in and I guess play entirely different heroes and uh, put it behind you. The battle yeah, definitely something that uh, maybe Bulba focusing on there, right? The mental effort there is crit able to outclick Nisha. Very difficult against those uh, core players. Yeah. They love the spam, but uh, crit, he's got it. You know, this guy, he plays a mean troll too. That's the only bounty rune they were able to get though. Secret picking up the other three on the rest of the map. Yeah, it's very scary up top, right? You have Sand King, Marana, very good setup for the arrow. And uh, the setup overall isn't incredible this game. Uh, their last pick, you know, that, that OD sitting there. I'm mm. sure they were probably tempted by it, but they allowed me to want to keep that Slark in the mid lane. Mid one uh, wanted that instead for this matchup. And looking to have a very good mid game here in timing with Nisha. They don't really have like the alpha carry, right? If I had to pick who's going to come out on top if this game just keeps on rolling, I got to go with Arteezy, especially when he's dealing. <gasps> oh, oh. oh Sumail so steals the tree and then eats another one afterwards can't do that now i'm not sure what that was all about but uh mid one getting hurt a little bit there i mean he he dropped the tree and ate another one afterwards right uh, was that crazy you know I, I didn't see sorry i was too busy in my own yeah. world well nonetheless but by the way our, our crowd reacted it sounded like it uh oh s4 there they go again Puppy gonna beat him down that orb of venom and yeah now crit's trying to find a skewer here He's got the angle. Looking for the moment. Get on back over here, buddy, but not within the tower range. Still going to be able to body block here. S4 trying to trade hits, but that is a big tanky ogre who does not care about the little enchantress. 
man, but looking across these lanes, everything fairly good for Secret early on. So they have seven last hits on. Oh, that arrow! Arrow! Woo! Barely off the mark. Sumail is away from that. Man, so chill. I can't believe there's no tips after that. Yeah, the chat, we only have the tipping, the high fives. Those have gone by the wayside. Mm. Now that we've moved into game three. You know, game one, everyone's all happy go lucky. Hoo hoo hoo. Not so much now. Very silent. Both teams, obviously, with a ton on the line. And feeling like they need to make this play happen as another Yapsor rotation towards the mid lane. That was scouted out the arcane rune and they should know that the Marana is in the area in fact Kurt's gonna come in and see if he can find a skewer play gaps are over in the trees they run into him and that will stop the pressure it looks uh, he like, can just likely. chase him right if he's just keeping vision on Yapsor, the game is going better for eg mm. Stop him from getting kills, even try and block him from airing neutral, steal some of his XP. Crit, his only role this game is to empower. And that is something. There's, there's a high five. You know, oh, thanks for the XP, buddy. Hold on. Oh, top lane again, bottom lane again. S4 gonna get caught and gonna nice. go down. So Misha finding the kill. Yeah, they have uh, their own answer for this end, right? Of course, already playing it early in the series. They know how to try and get through that damage in the laning stage as Yapsor will shoot another arrow, but hit the miss once again, just stealing some farm from his mid laner. Oh, I missed him. Sorry. <laughs> Tactics coming out here from Yapsor. I mean, we all know what he does. That's true. To get the gold. Got to do what you got to do to make it happen. But uh, you can see that the big loser so far in this lane is going to be S4 right now. Only one last hit in comparison to the 20 and 13. As mid lane, mid one, going to be able to jump away from crit. And, and this is something I may be a little bit concerned about. In both of the previous games, EG looked very good with crit getting a ton of farm. And not really like it's going to be the case in this game as Nisha oh, man. bloodlusted up. Yeah, S4. He's just level two. So Nisha easily able to harass through him there with the 1 1 1 build. Now Yaps are going to be found out again here. More XP dished out to uh, his opponents. Sumail's just chasing him. I mean, the wave is pushing at the very least, so this isn't going to be that many last hits lost unless mid one can keep track of the lane, and that's going to keep it in a better position. But they do want to get some stacks off while they're here, though, right? So Fly's going to get the double as he's passing through. Very nice. Very efficient with these from EG. Yeah, in the previous games... Oh, empty mana pool for Poppy. Cancelled! By crit. Very good stuff there. The last thing you need is just more spam onto S4 as he tries to deal with Nisha. And all lanes right now going incredibly well for Secret. This is the secret that we were expecting to see coming into this. 2,000 gold lead at four minutes. Yeah, and it's pretty clear when you just look at the last hits where it's all coming from, right? I mean, that they have three cores far. Oh, and they got Sumail in the mid lane, gonna trade hits, but still not enough. He took some tower shots, and now instead it's gonna be mid one in trouble. Chase down one more hit, that's all they need. And then with the salve up, it's not enough. Mid one goes down. And Crit hands it over to Sumail as well there. And on the other side, Fly got Zai. So all the lanes going great, and a couple of kills just given away. It's under attack. Yeah, had the sentry prepped, and I guess uh, Zai trying to outplay him there. Now S4 as well. The uh, the Timber Soft actually has reached level three, so much harder to deal with. Puppy goes in for the bounty rune. Might cost him his life. Feels like it's well worth it indeed if they can get it. As the skewer back onto Puppy. Body blocked in, and Sumail just keeps running around at level five. No fear, no cares about the mid lane. I mean, there's nobody hitting CS in there, but he's just getting kills. Up top as well. Looks like Zai's under the tower. Oh, oh, they missed the arrow. Good blink away there from Artur, and I'm gonna keep the pressure back away from him. You can see the strength of the Sand King in spite of that death, still 36 CS here. And look how it just goes right back up too, right? Because the last hits, they're still stacking on secret side. Right up to that 2K, even after losing two heroes. Definitely. Oh, good sentry there. Catches the observer ward that was placed down by Fly. He's going to try and go for another round of stacks here. Should be able to pick up both of them. Sumail Just looking crit. to maybe get another, but quite going to get there in time. So it is just going to be the two stacks. Still quite good. Man, they are all over this, though. Something that Seeker just has not been uh, em uh, employing in this uh, series so far. Now, Crit's coming through. It's only level one in power, though. So. Sorry, but that's all I got. Oh, hey, there you go. He stole one of them, but now they know. Uh, Sentry Ward drop down for Fly does not scout out. It's just a 
Yapsor knowing where they were going to be. I feel like crit's inevitably going to feed here. He's like trying to get as many levels as he can, but a level six Slark is very spooky. A single point in the pounce is still 2.5 seconds. That thing has a serious value point at level one. And mid one wisely keeping the creep wave as close to his hill as possible. Crit just kind of soaks up what he can. And in the meantime, you can see Sumail here farming up, taking a good amount of damage, but he clears through those stacks and I mean, he's, he's almost top of the net worth because of it. He talked about it. Mid lane, leashing onto crit. He's still worried about the skewer, right? He doesn't know what kind of follow-up is there, so has to uh, let him go. Hey, he would have to commit the ult if he wanted to go for the whole kill. Plus he, uh, well, now he has two points left to dark back too, I suppose. Time, Zai turns a burrow strike onto one, the arrow, but the disruption is there. And that will stop some of the aggression at the very least as RTZ just gets the blink away afterwards. S4's game still very difficult now. Uh, almost half the net worth Zai at this point from the Sand King. So how concerning is this early game for Evil Geniuses? They're 2,000 gold down at about seven and a half minutes. Do the stacks make up for it at all? They're, they're going to be a dual core kind of a game, very akin to what happened with Secret in the first game. I mean, okay, that was kind of just a solo core of just niche on the Wraith King, but uh, as for, I, I don't know how much you can expect from him, frankly, this game. I think that he's already kind of not set up for the best looking game, right? Simply because of uh, he got picked so early. He doesn't have a lot of control to work with. It, it's mostly going to be Sumail getting those big bolas to help him put the damage out. Yeah. Well, and Puppy does manage to get the TP out of there. Sumail already getting very active on this hero. Ember Spirit rotating at level 5. Not something that you often see, but did mean that he was able to pick up two kills off of it. Yeah, that's an 8-minute Midas now for mid one. No boots, just Wraith Band, Midas. God. Flashing in that mid lane for all to see. Meanwhile, now Zai, you can see, got a big item himself too. That Veil complete. And pretty scary stuff here for a PA who's sitting this low. Has to respect the potential arrow that could come from Yapsor. They don't have a lane ward either, so he's not sure how many heroes are here from Secret. You can see this rotation coming from Puppy. Fly is nearby to help out, but he's gonna need help himself, it looks like, as Zai spots him out. And that arrow is forward. way! Woo. And they get him. But S4 actually rotating in, he still has the swarm on him and is gonna turn now onto Zai, but Zai able to eat away the sentry ward that was down. Really heads up play there, but Zai walking back into a sentry oh, ward on another the other one. side, and well, that one is not gonna be able to make his escape, although Zai walks away from oh, Rome another. Again. And look at all this damage that's building up the kill of Arteezy. They do bring down the Sand King, but lose their carry in turn, and Sumail now trying to make something happen, see if he can kill off Puppy. Another round of impetus, S4 trying to run away. He's taking a lot of damage. They do kill off the Ogre. Mid one shows up as well now, a flurry of action. Doesn't have the leash though, need the arrow. Max, well played. Yaps are making it happen, but able to get that remnant out. They did not have the pounce for the follow-up. Yeah, no shrine ready though. So that's gonna be EG licking their wounds for quite a while. And yeah, that damage coming from Zai just not able to quelling blade the other sentry, but then setting up for another arrow there from Yaps, or was having a, a pretty good start here. Oh, oh, and two, not really the, the, telling the full story of how much uh, pressure he's been putting on to EG. And now Nisha takes the tower right in Arteezy's face. And Shikuchi's back in time for the bounty. And the net worth lead continues to grow 5,000 now into the favor of Secret, who are just doing everything right. And we talked about how there's this late game threat for sure from EG. I mean, they're getting all these stacks. There's some net worth sitting inside the jungle, but what if they get pressured? What if Secret come in here and take this all away from you? Then your game's just done. Yeah. True enough. It, it is a little bit different, though, at the very least, since mid one went for this Midas. Uh, might be a little bit slowed down on the pressure, but these heroes just naturally come online faster, and that's where the Sand King well, uh, really comes Yaps into play. Yeah, here, but I don't think there's any follow-up. Yeah, he's just kind of leaped his way out of there after the disruption. Dyer's top tower is under yeah, once he takes his tower, he's just heading in there. I think he's just going to make this his home and try and force uh, Arteezy as well as Sumail down to that dire triangle instead. Thankfully for EG, Sumail is going to be able to finish off those stacks. Clears through them with the help of the Empower. But now the question is, how do Secret invade the jungle? They have a smoke, gonna be switched back over into the inventory. Takes a moment. Look, look at this. The <laughs> gang. They're just hanging out, man. They got the smoke, here we go. They know where Sumail's gonna be, and they're heading right there. Yeah, they have an Observer Ward down bottom that's seeing where TZ's farming. 
And as they walk up to high ground, Sumail, does he have a remnant out? Doesn't look like it. He throws one now, but Puppy is going to sit on that. Stop. All right, here we go. The force, force the throw. fire blast, and the arrow. An arrow comes out. It's all done perfectly. And it looks oh. like they find the kill on Sumail. Tic-tac-toe. Dude, Secret just worked them. What a setup there from Secret. They are just firing here. 5K lead, 5-5, five to five, but it ain't even. No. 5,000 gold lead. That's the other five that's hanging out to the side. Now, granted, EG have ridiculous physical damage if they can find that control. The other problem that they've really got is just this Enchantress has not been able to get that much done. Well, you said before, Crits had these incredible games, and you give him the mag, and it, it's tough, right? Even if he he finds this RP that, that's once every two minutes. Yeah. You know, this isn't a flashy hero for him that can get things uh, moving across the map. He he has to wait, you know? He he has to rely on Sumail and Arteezy to carry him. This could be good, though, if they can get this catch on the mid one. Can they, though? They're thinking about it. Disruption to open up, and now Arteezy moving in. They need a lot of damage, but... Now Shadow Dance just walks away and you always get one. That's that's both of your cores. Time to get the dust. Fly plants down his last century and says, I need some last hits here, guys, because dust is expensive. Well, that is going to be five to five. That one with the moonlight shadow able to escape and now go for initiation afterwards. Dodges the arrow, but Fly just walks into it. Man, it is such an expensive game here for the supports, and this is uh, not a GPM hero here for Fly, not a GPM hero here for Crit, so you need Dust for everybody else, you need Sentries for the Slark because of the Dark Pack. How are you going to keep tracking this uh, Moonlight Shadow? Plus, you've got the uh, the limit on the Sentries, which is another reason why uh, Marana has started to become a little bit more powerful of a hero. Now smoked up again here, getting very aggressive. Oh, that oh. slight hit a few more than he expected. Sumail. And he got out of there. Immediate reaction. That's the blink reveal. So EG dodging away from the gate. Although Zai walks up to the high ground in a lot of trouble. RTZ just finds him. Can they get the kill in time? The arrow connects and the pearl strike comes through. Zai living. Man. Well, on the other side, not looking like it's going to happen. RTZ, he needs to get a couple more crits here. Puppy very low, but they kill off the PA again. And mid one lives through it all. The shockwave pulls back, able to find that one kill. And S4 now throwing out those impetus shots, trying to find a finish for his team. A triple kill for Yapsor, though. Anisha just running away. Needs a couple more long duration, but he's invis away and four dead for evil geniuses. The kill on the middle one was pretty huge, though. I did not think they were going to get it. But uh, Arteezy getting a couple nice crits there with the help of the Empower. Makes that a four for three. It still favors EG in terms of gold, but the fact that uh, the PA and Ember are going down, they're not going to be farming this whole time. And now a potential kill here on S4. And he's just dropping all the magical damage in the world, and EG don't have an answer. They're going to take down this tier one tower. It feels like the story of this game, in a way, is Evil Genius is just needing to, to hold off. But I, I'm not sure if they're going to have what it takes. Hey, they do not have wave clear. They don't have spam. When you're this far behind, this is very scary stuff. Sumail is going for drums. He knows he's going to have to go combat build here. On the other side, you do see the remnant forward just going to try and... I think they're only going to get one bounty rune again. Yeah. Puppy gets control. the D ward. They're scared. And the, the lead grows. The rich get richer. This is so often the story of these games, almost 3,000 bounty gold going the way of Seeker. You can see 11 bounties there with 750, all that EG's been able to collect at this point in the game. And that's only a portion of the net worth difference between these two teams. You got to think losing those big games, the mental toll, uh, maybe leading to mistakes here. And RTZ again caught back behind. He's in this freaking tier two, it feels like. And well, they are going to call off the charge, but Secret are just leaving no stone unturned in this quest for pressuring EG. Ed one already having that drums done, S4, looking to make something happen, walking into his own jungle, but it does not look like they'll be able to find a pickoff. Nisha, maybe a bit far forward, but he is underneath his own team's vision. He is not Back worried out. this game. Yeah. I, a Manta, this game is pretty much a BKB when it comes to suns and control, right? Like. You're gonna get re like RP'd anyway. Other than that though, if he can just mantle his way out of the searing chains. Oh my God, look at this. It's 16 minutes in it's I, I don't blame it. It's not wrong, man. And this the, game is out of control. The thing that's so crazy about this too is if you consider 
you know, what PPD was saying during the panel, right? Like this, it felt like she outdrafted them both games. And this one, it just has not gone the way they wanted at all. 9,000 gold lead at 16 minutes. Secret doing everything that they want and a little bit more. Yeah, lane matchups just going extremely well for Seeker, and then the key after that is to just make sure you don't make mistakes. Uncharacteristic errors in the first two games. This looks more like the secret that you expect clinical here as uh, they're, they're taking EG to school. Mid one sitting top of the net worth. The place he has not been so far this series, it feels like. And on a hero that definitely make people shudder. All right, though, but you are teasing now. Okay. Up to the Deso, right? That's a, a long investment finally coming to fruition for the power of the uh, uh, Empower. I, I've seen a couple games like this, you know? The PA, not the hero you want to have to tangle with when you're so far ahead. The game feels free, everything seems fine, and suddenly she crits through your heroes and you lose a team fight out of nowhere. Okay. And that's going to depend upon crit finding those big initiations. And he's almost towards that blink dagger as Crits well. on crits on crits, you know? Yes. With crit to help. Perfect. Arrow comes out. Disruption. Going to be fine. That is another nice part of this draft as well, as you've got some pretty decent save. The Atos on Marana, kind of an interesting adaptation from Yapsor. Just another thing to worry about uh, for the PA and the Ember, uh, as well as just giving them some tools to, to play against S4 too. So, oh, EG smoked up. What are they going to accomplish with this one? They've got their eyes sort of on Zai, but back towards the mid. Mid one is going to be running through, and well, a, a little bit of trepidation coming out from EG. This smoke doesn't look like it's going to accomplish that much. Yeah, and now Secret's still just sitting with the Moonlight Shadows. They've got their own pseudo smoke every once in a while if they want to try and play aggressive and flex their lead. Yeah. But currently they're waiting on that Diffusal Blade as mid one finishes it in the mid lane here on that last creep. And it felt like they were going for that play with the DD on the Ember Spirit, see if they could find a fight. If not, just back out afterwards. Try and wait for those BKBs, which both cores are now queuing up. And likely the same story for mid one here soon too, right? Yeah. Throwing out an impetus shot. Causes a little bit of trouble. I like, by the way, how S4 doesn't have the mortal equipped because I feel like the rainbows show off a little bit better. This is like, it's a Heidi way. You know what I mean? Tactical. Exactly. Are you accusing of pay to lose here? <laughs> it's a possibility. <laughs> Careful now, Cave. Yeah. Keep fair. your job. All cosmetics are amazing and make you play better. <laughs> Don't forget to get your sign trove care up. <laughs> Has anyone ever flexed that in the middle of a cast? I don't think so. You're yeah. first, When well, there's a 9K lead, there's only so much you can do. <laughs> 10 to eight. As you said, 9K lead. Secret, playing this one safe, not needing to go too far forward and uh, get caught out of position, because that's the big thing, right? The Blink Dagger is just now complete for crit. Do you think that EG try and make a move with that, or do they have to wait for BKBs? I think they're playing defensively, waiting for BKBs. If there is some sort of aggression from Secret, they'll go for the RP, but maybe maybe they're going to try and at least scout out their jungle here, try and regain some control. Seems to be the movement that they've got going on. Uh, they, they are keeping steady, right? It's been a 9k lead oh, for a while. Oh, and he breaks the smoke, and they don't get the chains, and mid one just walks away. Oh, God. That one hurts. That one hurts a lot. And he had that sentry. He knew that sentry was there, too, right? Yeah. And now they missed the sentry on the high ground, too. Secret gonna pick up three bounty runes, it looks like. Okay, that's a good one. They pull him back in, trying to find mid one, able to get into the shadow dance. No mana there on crit. Also, wasn't sure about the dark pack, didn't want to go for the RP, so. Yeah, understandable. So, 20 minute mark. In the meantime, that. they're losing control of the lanes. Nisha up top, the rest of the crew in the middle, arrowing the catapult, speeding things up here with the bloodlust. Hard to push that bottom tier one without losing a lot. And Nisha, he wants to put the maximum threat here of the top lane into play. Force people back. The Ember not wanting to have to deal with this. Uh, does not have, ended up going for the phase boots, not going for any boots to travel early on to try and deal with this pressure. In the meantime, Arteezy is going to pressure down the tier one tower in the bottom lane. Get his team a little bit more gold and get him closer to the... I mean, they even commit a scan though, and they're still just losing the mid tower. Mid one is poking and prodding. They're going to take at least 600 damage on that tier three top. All things going the way of team secret as EG continue the path towards BKBs. 
Well, and again, you think about what happens when those BKBs do eventually come out. You've got the RP available for your high ground defense with the Blink Dagger done on crit. A lot of ways to try and bait out reactions, with whether it's the sleight of fist into chains or what have you. Um, but it does kind of feel like EG are just going to have to play defense. I like that uh, Secret are playing very quick, though, right? They're not uh, resting on their laurels at all. They've taken all the tier twos in the top area. I think uh, a lot of times throughout this group stage, we've seen teams get a similar lead, but not press it this much. They've kind of left that like mid tier two. Maybe they take the top one nice and early, but they are really putting the strangle onto EG right now. Looking maybe to try and keep that pressure on as they take down Roshan. Do you have a couple of other items that could get picked up still? Mjolnir if they wanted to on the... Uh, I think with an Aegis, I like that. I mean, it, it might just be worth it just to go. And they're going to go for the Moonlight Shadow play to start it all off. Who can they find? BKB's just now completed for EG. Both? At least the PAs. PA, not the Ember yet, though. But the Ember, a little bit more survival, has an Arcane Rune still, too. Yeah. I think he just popped one. Yeah, this guy's getting Arcane Runes everywhere. S4, showing mid. Does not look like Secret want to jump on him. Maybe anticipate. A bait play down bottom. Zai is scouting out Arteezy. They're trying their own bait play down here. This could be bait. Then he sees the fresh and power. All right, need to be careful. Arteezy just going to jump away. Force out the rotation from Zai, and that looks like it's enough from EG to decide to back out. Unfortunately for them, Zai has bots. So he's the one who's trying to keep this pressure up and let oh. them play fast. And look out, S4 gets caught by the air. RTZ going to throw one dagger of his own and now trying to back away. Double S4 bracer. Is a Medallion. Him, untouchable. Dragon Lance. <laughs> it's keeping him survival. <laughs> 1,620 HP. It's hard to kill the inch. 18 wand charges. S4 has arrived, but of course his, uh, his game is, it's not really an offlaner game. It's true. He's a uh, jacked up support at this point. He's behind Yafsor. Okay, now he's ahead. Okay, and then behind, and then ahead. <laughs> Go back and forth. I, I will say one thing that's nice about the Ench is getting up to that level 12 does severely increase the amount of damage that you deal with that impetus. Um, but not a whole lot of those sort of right click attack speed items as of yet for the Ench. I mean, they got the doubly uh, slippery heroes too, right? And the yeah. Weaver and the Slark and the. The sure CC enough. is not all there from EG right now. How often have we talked about stuns just winning you some dotes? So how do Secret actually go high ground, though? It, it feels like EG have a really good lineup for holding on to it. That Ember Spirit now finishing off the BKB as well. A lot of it's dependent on Crit, who's now stunned up and arrowed. Oh, Ooh, disruption. Okay. Fly, saving his buddy for a moment. They, they still get out of there. He is done. Didn't get any seconds on Simon Bertizzi. Close up one. That's Sai. Already dead. Can they find any more? Mid one tries to hide away. They have decided to chase, and Yapsor going to die. Puppy off to the side, able to get himself out. So they do manage to win a quick fight there. Signs yep. of life from EG. A lot of damage there, not just even Arteezy, right? Uh, got through there with S4 and Sumail, everyone putting their uh, their weight into it. And the biggest thing, no BKBs popped. That is a very good point. Uh, so unfortunately, they couldn't quite get the uh, disruption in time as uh, the arrow had connected. That's why he came out still stunned up there on crit, but so happy with his trade, I would think. Especially if it gives him a little bit more breathing room to get that BKB and, uh, and more. Now, you know, for the Moonlight Shadow again, but all of the team is not quite there. Secret. Oh, mid one. They spot him. He, he has to know they spot him. And they jump in. They find the catch. Trying to get the kill, but mid one. He's able to jump away just barely. Are you kidding me? Hey, he wasn't even worried. I had no ulti or anything. <laughs> just going up. He's like, all right, guys. I, I RP's down. I mean, the thing is, he had to know that they had vision. So th that was... I mean, can we call it a bait? I don't know what to call that. You ask how they go high ground. That's one way to do it. Absolutely. Nisha still has that Aegis. Oh my God. Yeah. Living life on the edge. Great. Flirting with danger. Great positioning there from Crit. But uh, Secret perhaps considering pushing things up here. And still 10 second BKBs online. Aegis, a minute left. Look at those wards. Yeah, trying everything defensively. Sentries all over the place. Again, a, a nature of the uh, the Moonlight Shadow and the Slark, but once more, a GPM talent not there. So hard for a Shadow Team. He only has boots, wards, smokes, dust, and then just gold for wards. Interesting. And 
Well, there is going to be a DD down on the bottom side of the map. One is being saved for the moment. Man, Nisha is huge right now. Yeah. He's ahead of a Midas Lark. Nisha has definitely proven the haters wrong here. In the Does Have he it. have haters? He's a pretty nice guy. That's true. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, TZ pops the BKB. Nisha already down low with that Soul Catcher. But he backs out afterwards. And with the BKB pops, Secret's queue to back away. Now, Min one, he's got haters after the first two games. That's I think his own fans and enemy fans are hating on him. But he's got himself into a butterfly now. So uh, trying to give PA a taste of her own medicine on this one. It's a long while before Arteezy going to have any sort of an answer to that. True enough. I mean, if obviously Crit is able to find a big RP or something as that Aegis expires, maybe you can just do it strictly off the cleave damage from the uh, yep. PA, possibly. Did go for the lifesteal talent, but still has in power. Now, movement out across the map. They're moving out now, the Aegis is down. Do spot it. Moonlight Shadow afterwards. There's some sentry wards in the area, so if EG place any, they will get vision. Arrow follow up, fly there. And testy, tense moment. Dyer's top tower. Top lane. Meanwhile. What's going on? Yeah. Mid one. Gets the pounce away and gets some damage onto that tower. They've got S4 up here too in a bit of a precarious spot, but his teammates will approach and back him up. Isha thinking about mid one and Sumail. Careful now. Yeah, he cannot get pounced. Yeah, destroys that hero. Puppy in the meantime, the arrow goes in. It's gonna connect. The stun is there afterwards. Nisha thinking about chasing forward. The RP connects. Is it good enough target? Zai gets the burrow strike off, will eventually fall, but now Nisha trying to turn on Arteezy. They're able to get him away. So Nisha not able to make enough space for Zai to escape. EG still holding on. No BKB pop that time. Zai is a great target. Although, of course, you'd rather have the Slark and the Weaver. Uh, you know that he's one of the heroes right now that's currently helping these lanes stay pushed out for the side of Secret and denying you space to try and farm and try and get yourself back into this game. Uh, he also sets up a lot of the stuns for the Ogre, sets up stuff for the Marana too. So Zai, that, uh, that leading vision to give Nisha an easy time. And again, it feels like this game, everything for my carries. S4 going for that solar crest. Right, he's going to run in the mid one here. He's got the BKB and the TP. Leashed. Thinking about chasing. Does have Phantom Strike away. Arteezy still chase. They're bringing in the Ogre. And not wanting to give up on this one. The BKB TP away mid one. Just going to jump through because why not? He's making the space, you know, trying to make you commit as many resources as possible there. And Fly going to try and use this opportunity to get some vision down to the top. Sentries, observers, anything to try and create a pickoff moment on that side lane. And in the meantime, Ember Spirit's been able to build into an Aghanim Scepter. So BKB Ag's available. Yeah. And each year holding on right now. It's, it's, it's a scary build, though, without the uh, the 25 talent, right? The earlier the Ag's, the less effective it's going to be. Okay. Uh, because you don't have that 20 Remnant Charge Restore time. So it's still incredible, of course. It gives you ridiculous range. It gives you good chase potential. If they find this good RP, it's going to be very hard for these Hanger Honors of Secret to get away. Probably still possible for someone like Nisha and Mid One, but Yafsor, Puppy, Zai could end up being kind of free food here if they get the initial good start. If the fight starts to look bad for Seeker, which is still gonna be very difficult to do when they have a 14K lead. True enough. Arrow still going through. for these bounties. Root there, onto the Ember. Puppy getting caught for the moment. Sai looking for the catch, and they actually hit that arrow onto Mag. Meanwhile, Sumail's gonna kill off Puppy, still chasing for Zai's more. again. Zai is dead. Time lapse back the other way. Rooted, he's back. gonna be back, and he might just go down. The imminent. He's just going to fall. EG pull it back again and they're looking for more. EG find three. Mid one's got to run. Uh, that is a great first what? fight with that Aghanim Scepter. That is the reason you're talking about there. It gives you a hell of a lot. And we knew it was going to be a dual core game with these two trying to carry everything. And look at that damage. 7,100 of their 96 coming from the PA and the Ember. And now moving into Roshan. I mean, these heroes are dead with no buyback, so they can't contest. I. This is a huge opening for EG. It was at 92% at like 12 minutes. Oh, 92%. Can I see this after an age? So are we, we're going to start bringing that back down a little bit, perhaps, and see Sumail 12.5k hero damage. Whew, already on the Ember. 
So now just a 10,000 net worth lead. But the bigger thing too now is that each year you're gonna start to claim some of this other gold around the rest of the map. As we see this replay, it was such a spread out fight. And this has gotta favor EG. Yeah, and the spread out, yeah, as you said, it's it's Zai. He goes and he thought there was probably gonna be more heroes. He also understands how important that crit's going to be, right? Because they know they want that big RP on the mid one or Nisha. Not expecting the damage to come out there. And especially that first hit bash from Arteezy. You're already lucky when you're playing the PA and uh, rolling the dice results in a victory for him on that one. Well, Fly definitely feeling the moment right now and feeling like they have the potential to keep this pressure on. Well, that's for still managing to find an impact too, right? After a uh, very difficult start on the edge. 5-3-5, five, five, gets that last impetus touch on Anisha, gets him quite a bit to uh, try and find himself into a BKB, much like his buddies. So how much does this change the complexion of the game now? Getting the Aegis on EG, uh, PA has it. Are you starting to feel like they, they're they're making this comeback work? Like I think the fights are still very hard, and there's still a, a pretty large window, I'd say, for Secret, right? You're, you're getting close to 25 talents now for that Weaver, and we still need that big RP. Oh, Crit. oh Zai, gotta be careful. Remnant forward, need to be careful. The arrow, the arrow, the arrow. With the save, it's coming out for Fly. He's got his buddy there, and they need to get the heck out. 50 yep. seconds, no Sand King. They didn't jump in on that arrow, didn't see their moment, and I can't blame them, right, because they don't see crit. You can't just follow up on Sumail if you can't find that RP. And it's, it's feeling like one of those moments again, secret. Maybe this pressure getting them a little bit. It's weird that we have these 10 second BKBs still, right? Like, <laughs> the one on uh, mid one too, just like holding on to it, not finding his moment. Well, one of the problems with this hero, I mean, it, the Slark is ridiculously farmed, but it feels like his impact in this game has not been up to that level of farm. Maybe it's just the, by nature of the hero itself, but another tier two tower taken, and this game is almost back to even. I, they have the Abyssal. Yeah. I, they were not expecting this to come out this early. They don't have an answer to it. Uh, the best they have is the dark oh back, my but God. <laughs> look at the swing back there now, down to 60%. I, I think it might go higher. Yeah, because EG, like, uh, one Abyssal on Denisha, he didn't build for this. He has no way to deal with it. And I mean, you go into like the net worth graph and you just see all of these pips that go back the other direction. Over the past, what's this been? Almost 10 minutes. It's just all been coming up EG, it feels like. Now, high ground, waiting. Got Still have his Aegis. They don't have Slark. Feels reminiscent of a moment last game with Samael on the Aegis, and they ended up losing it very quickly after Roche. Now, if you want more this time. Oh, the Abyssal! Jump in, find the Abyssal Blade to start this one off. Can they get the kill? Die. He's just dead, and no buyback again. That's three deaths seconds. in a row. He doesn't have an answer. Jump away from Sumail. Turn to fight. Try and take the puppy. Can he bring him down in time? No, but Sumail is going to be the one that cleans up with a stun. They don't have the save. They lose the Ember. Can he run back into this fight, or do they just need to escape? It's S4 trying to deal what damage he possibly can. Arteezy has the storm on him. They buy back on the Ember Spirit. And Nisha taking a lot of damage. Mid one also under control, but they have the Shadow Dance to run away. Ember Spirit is showing up, though. He's running the long yeah. way down. They don't know how many and remnants he has. The he's, chase. He's actually running the whole way because he wants to save them, but he didn't pop his BKB. He got caught by the arrow. Excellent play there from Yapsor. But with those buybacks, yeah, he lost 1,600 gold on Sumail, but he's still here, and they're still going to claim your melee racks. So EG, team to take the first tier three tower and now can clear out the rest of these shrines, try and control the map. I mean, this game is completely turned on its head. It's hard to believe that Secret are still sitting on that net worth lead here too. I mean, this is a level 25 Weaver. And he felt like he was so far ahead in this game. And I was just talking about how this Ember was like level 20. He's level 23. He's yeah. gonna have that final talent. This Agon of Scepter gets so absurd, and he's going for the Octarine build. This game, I, I don't know how to rate it exactly. It feels like it's just been a complete collapse from Team Secret over the last couple of minutes. Yeah, the going high ground issues strike again. They, they couldn't find it, didn't have an Aegis to do it, or they weren't able to at least uh, get up there with it, with the Weaver. And now hard to believe that it's uh, EG who draw first blood. Again, looking at the win probability right now, just again to strike back how big of a turnaround this has been. It's still holding that 51%. It's Roughly. like, not quite. It's just like, oh no, I'm sure I was right. Oh, it's going back up. Yeah. Well, 5,000 gold leads still for Team Secret in spite of that. Um, what's the play for them? How, how do they get their feet back under them in this game? 
Uh, how much more can the uh, mid one and Nisha really do? It feels like you got to start looking to the other players. Uh, Zai, for sure, is the big one. He needs to find a way to survive. Simple yeah. as that. Uh, EG, of course, doing a great job of prioritizing, but Zai's going to be the one to uh, to get in there and set those big fights for his team. Probably find Fly with the save, and uh, again, targeting crit, I do, I, I do still think is a big answer, right? Because yeah. Uh, Nisha, he needs that next defensive item, whether it's going to be the Scotty or it's going to be the Satanic. He needs to choose something and get there so that he can't just be calmed down in an RP or an Abyssal. Well, and you can see also the Blink Dagger picked up for Slark, wanting to get into the thick of things just to see if they can catch somebody out. He has been very efficient with the Midases, made the investment back 1.4 times mm -hmm. because of how early he got it. And now we'll see if he can make something happen here with the Slark's still holding on to that BKB. Nine seconds on that one. And uh, Arteezy now finishing up the Satanic. Sumail getting the Octarine. Arteezy now finally he can head towards that MKB if he wants to have an answer oh. to mid one. Arrow, there's no follow up though. Mid one also doing the same here. So the race to the MKB versus one another as we wait a minute and a half for the next Roche. Arrow goes out again, just get some vision down. Plus 100 untouchable, slow S4. He's found himself some survivability without gold by getting to that talent. Of course, BKB making that. Yes, good for the Slark, but the Weaver's still no answer for it other than his uh, Gemini. And EG, play for them. I guess just wait for that next Roshan. Make sure you have vision around the area. So difficult to play around the yep. Slark, though. Get yes. 25 on PA, too. And see the relative value here of the supports fly. 13 camp stats, man. Dude, EG have that efficiency on lock. It, Even, look at all the spent on support items too. Just keeping the sentries all over the map to try and deal with this Slark. And, and those camp stack make all the difference in the world because again, the story of this game is EG just trying yeah. to hold off against and the pressure that Secret had and they got their items because of those stacks. It's seven wards destroyed on Y too, which is shocking considering Secret are the ones with the Slark. Yes. Well, mid one jumps in, finds the leash. Can they get it in time? Burrow strike through on RTZ. RP thinking about it, but they hold on to it for the moment. Mid one down to very low HP. That's Zai okay, again. again with Zai. He's out of there. Uh, Puppy also in trouble, but they get the catch with the RP. But where's the follow up? Jump forward, find the kill on a Puppy. Mid one also in trouble, trying to get out of there. But another round of the remnants as they chase down the fish man in the river. You're in my territory now. And the stun, but mid one doesn't want to go back in. There's too much potential for damage. He just wants to try and escape, and that's going to be the blink away. Jeez. Barely gets out of that one. Still another win there for EG. And narrowly losing their Slark, too. That double RP I thought maybe was going to get set up there as Crit tried to keep himself alive with it. But RTZ not quite there in time for the follow-up. And you talked about the need for the levels on Sumail. Now 25. This ability is just absurd. <laughs> I mean, the charge of sword time, just gonna get himself up to five, and you're not getting away, right? If you start a fight, a secret, you better finish it. Now, well, Arteezy gonna keep this pressure out again. All of the lanes. Oh, mid one over a courier here. This would be a nice little pickup for him, but doesn't want to get oh, how caught about, How about a big uh, Magnus, too? Keep using that night vision, right? Keep an eye on to what crits up to. Very patient stuff here from mid one as he takes the back line. Maybe well, he's trying said, to set a fight. If he does go on somebody, he, they have to be able to finish it. Otherwise, essentially, Sumail could run him down. So, mid Jeez. one. Playing so aggressively here. Again, he's abusing that vision. Really good stuff here from mid one. He has the protection of his ultimate, knowing when things are looking bad for him. Does need to be careful, though. It just turned daytime. And now he's in no man's land. He's got a uh, baby. Mid one. They have the disruption afterwards if they want to use it. And S4 also chasing him down. Arteezy looking for the fob. Gets the blink away. But yeah, the turn today. Bulls hiding up on the high ground. A little bit scary there for the Slark. And it looks like they still get three bounty runes despite all that scouting out from uh, mid one too. So. EG feeling fine about this. They send Arteezy Good. forward in the blur. He's not afraid. He jumps forward. He gets the Abyssal Blade mid one. Gets the BKB off trying to run. Doesn't have his ulti for another 30 seconds though. And Arteezy throws it back. He's able to hit it. Chase forward for more. They have a shot from downtown. Tries to find the kill. And Sumail looking for the finish. Another remnant. Damn near the main. He's he saved. for more. There's going to be the catch on to Nisha the Weaver. Trying to run away. And they get the buyback from the Sark. And now run out of there. Epicenter for Staff. Trying to keep them all survivable. The turnaround. Artizi almost able to get brought down, but not 
quite there. Disruption save yet again. They're all super low on EG and they need to run, but Sumail looking to finish this one off possibly as they chase for it for more. They find another kill. The satanic, it was on cooldown. He still managed to find that last crit. Oh, they chase forward, and Evil Genius is now going to hit the tier oh, three towers. I... They turn forward onto the tier four. They're running. Do you believe in miracles, ladies and gentlemen? EG did it. Oh, the panel, they better hurry, because that one ended in a flash. EG celebrating in the booth. Oh, unbelievable. And again, you can't overstate the comeback that they had at around that 20 minute mark it was so ridiculous and, and look how much that win means <laughs> the family <laughs> up there as well the huge size of relief like oh my god that was way too close and they get to bask in the glory of shang